It's Thursday, April 1st, 2027, and the Chicago White Sox are continuing their march to their first World Series title in 22 years. I have gotten to this point in the series where I think once we win a World Series, uh, I'll end the year-to-year, you know, month-to-month simulation, and we'll sim ahead like 10 years and see how our players have done that we want to keep track of. Uh, But for right now, we'll move on until we get to that point. I wanted to check out before we start... Some of the former White Sox um, that we've had the luxury of, of, of seeing along the way that are now gone. Lucas Giolito is still a free agent. Burt Cole and Matt Moore have retired. They both won. Uh, they both were All-Stars with us. Dylan Cease has just been traded from Milwaukee to Oakland um, for Tyler Soderstrom and Daniel Gilarte, who are two decent prospects. Jose Soriano is in AAA with us, actually. Um... I, I put him down after spring training after he kind of struggled. Andrew Vaughn signs an eight-year, $209.4 million deal with the Chicago Cubs. He's now in Wrigleyville instead of, south, instead of the south side of Chicago. He has some seasons here at $30 million around there. Uh, AAV, I, I just, I, <laughs> I do not want to sign him to that contract, and I didn't. He struggled with uh, the U.S. in four plate appearances in the World Baseball Classic. And we have guys like Bregman now playing first base as a righty and, and Pena on the team that I, I, you know, I don't really need Vaughn anymore. Wilfred Veras is in AAA for the New York Mets. What a fall for Veras after an all-star in his rookie season. Um, just was bad for the Mets, and I, I, he's done, like... He's not really going to recover from this. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. Uh, I'm surprised we got as much production as we did from him. Carlos Pena, by the way, I forgot to tell you in the last episode, did win Rookie of the Year. Maui Ahuna came in second. Um, And the last guy who has made an All-Star game for us, Elo Jimenez, is in Pittsburgh now. He has not been a positive war player since he left us in 2024. Former White Sox overall, we'll just take a quick look. Yolki Cespedes here with the Padres. Gavin Sheets, a free agent. Willie Adamas with the Yankees. Yohan Moncada with the Cubs. So Cubs have uh, Vaughn and Moncada after Moncada led the Ameri- or the National League in uh, doubles, which is pretty cool to see from him. But the power is almost completely gone from his bat. Tim Anderson is on the Cardinals after um, two average seasons with them at second base. Dylan Dingler. On the Mets now. Garrett Crochet also on the Mets. Aaron Bummer also on the Mets. We traded him a while ago. We only had one year with him, um, but he hasn't really done anything outside of this season with Baltimore in 2026, which earned him a uh, million-dollar contract with the Mets. Liam Hendricks also with the Mets. (laughs) We just have such a pipeline. Uh, after he played for the Cubs a season ago. But Hendricks, you know, Crochet, I, Ronaldo Lopez, also, also with the Mets. We did not have a hand in this. We also got rid of him after a season with us in 2023. San Francisco milked some good years out of him. He leaves $3 million with the New York Mets. Giolito is here. He shouldn't be. Kopech, also with the Mets. Free agent signing after uh, actually a really good run with... The Cincinnati Reds, they win the World Series. They actually traded away Nick Lodolo and Hunter Green. Lodolo goes to the Dodgers, uh, who had traded their NL Rookie of the Year winner, Eddie's Leonard, away to the Brewers. Uh, And Hunter Green is traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks, who have really improved their team in their rotation. Um, They picked up, I believe, Justin Steele as well and Taj Bradley with this lineup of Corbin Carroll... I don't know if it'll cycle down the way I want it to. Alec Thomas, Blaze Alexander, Kyle Schwarber, who hit 53 bombs last year, Wildered Patino, Cattell Marte still in there, now playing first base, Gabriel Moreno, Brooks Lee, and Steven Ondina. Like, that's a really good team. And now with Juan Pinto, who has um, come along as a young player, and Dre Jameson. Like, this is almost a complete team. I don't know how their bullpen is. It's It's okay. Um, so I, I would see the Diamondbacks kind of marching ahead. And then Zach Wheeler has retired. He pitches two years with the Gi- uh, with the Giants, and really one year. He pitched one game. Looks like he got hurt, and then he immediately retired. 
Um, dodged a bullet, not giving him that big deal. And same with uh, Walker Bueller, if we look him up. We had the opportunity to sign him to a long-term deal. He went to Colorado, um, and he has been bad. He was bad for them last year. Didn't actually pitch um, yet this year after his injury. And, I, you know, he's probably cooked too. So I think we've done a good job in uh, managing our players. We'll check some prospects here really quickly. Jeff Calderon in rookie ball, number 46 prospect in baseball. Didn't pitch well in 25 innings, but I hope, I hope he, does, he does better this year. Frank Ramirez we signed in international free agency. He's the 19th prospect in baseball. Ernest Fruchtenbaum up in, high, er, in, in single light right now. Has the capability of playing center field, but I think he'll be a gold glove caliber right fielder instead if he ever makes it to the bigs. But with this skill set, uh, he's very promising. Jesus Codinez, who was once in the top 100, uh, is not anymore. He is a first base DH kind of guy with a good bat. Jacob Walsh is in AAA. As a lefty first baseman, we don't have a spot for him with Carlos Pena being you know, a perennial MVP candidate. Um, so we'll either have to find a trade for Walsh or somehow find a spot for him. I don't know. Sacrifice defense and put Pena in, in left field. Parker Brocious, uh, we traded four in a trade that I'll cover fairly soon. If you remember, I actually wanted him in the dra- in the 2025 draft. We took Jacob Witten instead. I end up with Brocious anyways, uh, and he's a, he's a good young outfielder for us. Sion Rose, if this power comes along, he's really good. Um, but he might actually be an outfielder, you know, first base catcher kind of guy with it, with his defensive ratings. Um, we'll see if he makes it. Noah Franco, I don't really see a future for him. I, I don't really want to have him on the prospect list. Um, his power and contact are good, but at 20, they're not that far developed. Ben Cobb, righty starter, 18 years old in rookie ball. Coleman Mizell, we purchased out of uh, the Independent Leagues in the Atlantic League. Didn't actually play a game for them. He was just cut by um, Tampa's uh, rookie league or A ball affiliate. Alpha Mosey, we picked in the sixth round. Uh, spent some time in spring training for us. Already up in high A after one at bat in rookie ball. I like him a lot. This arm has come up. He's now capable of playing third base rather than it just kind of maybe being possible. I think he'll be a good player in the future. Thomas White is in AAA. The changeup needs to develop down there um, before I consider him like a real starter. He's a lefty, number 84 prospect in baseball. I'm excited to have him come up. Boston Keller I have in A ball. He can play a little second base. Um, the, he needs to be better as, as a pitcher, though, but he does have a good captain personality class. We'll probably end up being uh, Vaughn Necker here. In Kannapolis as well. Um, didn't hit as I'd like him to there after a good season in rookie ball, but uh, the, this skill set is, is promising. I actually converted him from a, a pitcher um, to a first baseman. Gavin Turley came up in spring training, hit well, 778 OPS. Um, center, future, the center fielder of the future, at least a bench option there, and a backup plan if we can't find one uh, on the market. Christopher Diaz is only a 40 potential, but he was so good in these draft leagues. Probably going to end up being a captain. Is a corner outfielder, but I'll keep him. Um, and until somebody wants him to trade, he'll, he'll be on our prospect shortlist. Former prospects-wise, you know, let's get into it. Esteban Ojeda was traded to the Minnesota Twins along with John Bay and Peyton Paulette for Parker Brocious. And Carlos Correa, who slots in to be our shortstop of the next few years. The contract, we got Minnesota to retain 15%, which uh, I'm really thinking that these first three years will be, he'll still be a decent player. But after that, I think he's going to fall off. I don't care. I need a shortstop right now. This team has a window to win a title. Uh, If we just keep getting a bite of that apple, as uh, David Stearns once said, I think he's, the guy who said it, the GM for the Brewers. I know the GM for the Brewers said it, but they had a different guy, maybe. Wes Kath is in San Diego still. Rough year for him. Lloyd El Chapelli with the Mets. Also a rough year for him last season. Pierce George breaks camp with the New York Mets after spending all... Or actually, no, he's in Syracuse. Um, he was in high A last season, not in triple A. I'm happy I traded him, <laughs> even though we only got... Uh, 
uh, we got Sandy for him, who sticks around. Yandy's back in Tampa, and Nova Sells in San Diego. We traded him uh, in the last video, I said. Um, I don't know. Martini is also a guy, but it looks like we made the right call by trading him. Brian Ramos never has really been able to do anything for San Francisco. We traded him a while ago to Seattle for Paul Sewald and Harry Ford, who's been claimed away. Brooks Baldwin is now with the Texas Rangers organization. We traded him away. I'll get into that soon. Sean Burke still in Cincinnati is just kind of an average starter, and we got two lefty relievers out of him with um, Brandon Williamson and Andrew Abbott. Davis Martin also still still in Cincinnati um, after being a Rule 5 pick from us. Luis Mieses, I, I think he's not really going to end up being anything. We traded him for Adam Frazier in 2023. Colson Montgomery still in Philadelphia. Um Hit okay last year in his major league debut, or I guess his second year in the bigs um, after a two-year gap. See how he does in another chance there in Philly. Jose Rodriguez, um, I don't know. He's he's fine. Wilbur Sanchez also fine. Sosa, Arias, Dowdle could possibly be up with a big league club. Jared Kelly as well. Renee Lastras, who is now with Texas. So let's get to some of these moves we made in the offseason and what our, our, our lineup and pitching staff look like. Starting with the starters first, Sandy Alcantara back on that $21 million team option. Conrad Bonert, the number 29 prospect in baseball, will start in the rotation to begin the year. Jesus Lazardo, I signed to a two-year, $24.4 million deal. Um, pitched okay his last full season in Texas, I hope that will get some good level of production out of him as the lefty in the rotation. Fernando Romero is back after his elbow injury, pitched one game in the World Baseball Classic for the D uh, Dominican Republic and didn't allow a run. I hope that we get some better production out of him than we saw towards the end of the year when he was terrible in, in August and September. Logan Webb is a big starter we traded for the Texas Rangers were looking to get off, uh, get off a lot of money. We trade Baldwin, Lastris, Zabala, Lewis, and Ben Wilson, none of whom are really impactful for the future. For Webb, under contract for three more years, we still owe him $66.6 million. Uh, this rotation, I think, is pretty good. I'm excited for it. Alex Lang will close once again after a 40-save season a year ago. Mania, Hentges, Abbott makes the team um, in the bullpen. He's out of option years along with Brandon Williamson. We bring back Luke Jackson, who was an all-star for the Red Sox last year and pitched even better for us after the deadline for $4 million. If he wasn't a spark plug, I wouldn't have brought him back. But, um, you know, he's a good veteran. And that trade turned out very well for us, trading away Adam Hackenberg to the Boston Red Sox. The other aspect of that trade I will mention in a moment. Giovanni Moran in the bullpen now as a long reliever after a really good year a season ago, 97 and a third innings in kind of a stopper, long relief role. And Jonathan Stever will be the right-handed version of that, it seems, as long as Fernando Romero is in the starting rotation. Stever will be in the bullpen. If Romero falters, I'll put Stever in the rotation, and uh, Romero will come be the long man as a righty. That's the pitching staff. The lineup, Jimmy Crooks. Still here at catcher as the lefty. He hit too well in spring training to, to move him down. Ronald Hernandez, these ratings have improved. Catcher ability has improved. He's 23. Hit well with us a year ago. I, I, I'm thinking big things for Hernandez here with this avoid Ks. The I, he's an average balanced catcher with a few ratings above average. Uh, an above average catcher ability. So I'm, I'm hoping he carries us. Um, at a position that we haven't had a good season from since, like, Yasmani Grandal in 2023. We've been searching for a catcher, just haven't been able to find one. Bregman slots in as the righty first baseman. Pena, after a wonderful season for the USA in the World Baseball Classic, comes back and will be our DH. Maui Ahuna in at second. Runner-up in Rookie of the Year a season ago. And Jordis Valdez, who was the other aspect of of the trade with Hackenberg and Jackson uh, comes along. He'll be our utility infielder, can play second, third, short, very capably, is a leader. Happy to have him at age 25. 
Cole Carrig will also be with the big league club with his extreme positional versatility. He hit well in spring training as well. Um, and and it's just good to have him. We got him for Brendan in the Brendan Rodgers deal for Lou James Groover, who goes to the Tigers big league club, um, as well as Miguel Ulola, who will start the season in Toledo for them. We retain Ryan McMahon. Hit okay in spring training. I just need him to be decent with the glove and decent with the bat, and he'll be as steady as he ever is. Mac Horvath was selected from the Arizona Diamondbacks in the Rule 5 draft. He's a captain, the lone captain on the team, can play the outfield and corner infield. He's hit well at every level of the minors um, with a bit of BABIP luck, but he's proven. And at 25, I think he's ready to, to be in, up in the bigs. We have a lot of positional versatility on this team. He will platoon with Terrell Tatum in left. Uh, and Tatum, who hit well in part-time duty, I think is ready for a starting role in his age 27 season here with us uh, after, you know, three parts of three seasons, I guess two almost full seasons, um, and then one cup of coffee, I think he's ready to to improve. Uh, Luis Robert back in center field didn't hit well, just need the glove to be good. Same with Ryan McMahon. I need Ryan McMahon and Robert to just be average offensive players and above average defensive players, and that's all I need. Oscar Colas, with the depth of outfielders we have in the minor leagues, this could possibly be his last season with us. Uh, he has been up and down each season. Um, above average with the bat, below, above, below, or like at or near average. He needs to have one of these 30 homer seasons, get up uh, past that mark for the first time since his rookie year, or it's his last year with us, really. That's the offense. Take a look at some of the Guys that we have on the 40-man roster outside of that. Esteban Gonzalez will be the first outfielder out from uh, Charlotte. Joey Cantillo we claimed off waivers. Juan Maestas we signed as a backup third baseman. Benny Montgomery will start in Charlotte as well after a rough spring training for him, uh, along with Alberto Mota, who competed with Venezuela in the WBC. Jose Mujica is our third catcher. He's down there in Charlotte, along with Jose Soriano. Um, Gavin Turley... Think about him as a backup center fielder, Coleman Mizell. Like I said, we got a lot of um, outfielders. And maybe, like, if we keep Jacob Walsh, Colas goes, and Walsh comes in and, like, could play left field, but I wouldn't want him to. Uh, Pena can do the same. It would just depend on what we're feeling like at that moment. Like, Pena's a, a 50 overall in left field. That's, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, that's what the team looks like right now. Here's the low minors. Talked about a couple of these guys already. And that's our top 100 prospect list. Kyle Morrison is up in Double A after a half seat or like a quarter season in High A, where he hit 17 homers. Have to see what he does. Um, these ratings outside of his power have fallen. So that's what that's what's gone on in the off season for the White Sox. Once again, we're predicted predicted to win the AL Central after we should have won it a season ago. We will have the best offense outside of the Blue Jays and the Orioles. And, our God, those Orioles, man. I want to beat them so bad. Uh, and the second-best pitching staff in the AL to the Orioles. Um, they're projected to win 103 games. We're projected to win 92. Here they are. They add Jorge Morla. Um, I guess not add, but, like, he'll have, her, he'll have his first full season there in the rotation. They do... Uh, have Jared Jones, who's decent. Like, I don't think they're that good pitching-wise, but it's this offense that'll give us trouble, which seems to have regressed a bit. But Anthony Rodriguez uh, traded for from Seattle. Really nice rookie year, but looks like he's even better. They traded him for Joey Ortiz, and Art Warren also was there in that trade. So our, our mortal enemies are... Also loaded and ready to go, but we should challenge once again for the division, should win it. I didn't look at individual predictions. Pena, obviously, will challenge for the MVP. I think this average is a little lower than I would hope it would be, but 42 bombs, 170 RBIs. and only 111 games last year, he had 37 homers. So I think they're, they're kind of selling him short. Any other familiar names? Jesson Dominguez. 
like the Orioles have Max Anderson and that guy that I was just talking about, Alex Rodriguez, Anthony Rodriguez. They have so many great young players. Uh, I think something that might bite them is Gunnar Henderson is not a shortstop, but they have him playing that. In the NL, um, we're actually supposed to be the second best team in Major League Baseball. So we'll see what happens. That's what we're going into the season into. Uh, we have a little bit more long-term money in the books now, it seems, as we have, uh, unlike we've had in previous seasons. Alcantara and Rob, uh, I almost said Robert. Robert will be free agents after the year. We'll have Bregman, Webb, Correa. Uh, Pena is on a long-term deal. We'll see about Colas and Romero. Um, but another interesting season upcoming. I, I hesitate to say that it's a turning point between a rebuild and not because we've made the playoffs every year and we stuck around. Um, but we really need to win the World Series. <laughs> um, best we've gone is seven games in the ALCS against the O's. I think this is a year we could beat them again if we get another shot. So we'll be back in July. Thanks for watching.